Okay, well, um, I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Zachary Zerringer. I work for the EdTech Center, and I know most of you. Um, and today, I, first, I'm, I mean, it's a user group, so we can kind of break out into you know individual questions. But I was going to demo at first uh, just a communication method that um, you guys are all using iPads, I think, everybody. And uh, and you have, an I don't have one. is that an iPhone or is that an Android? iPhone. Do you have a forward-facing camera on there? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Well, this will pertain to that too. So it's any any device that has uh, that. It could al also be a PC with a webcam. So we're going to talk about Google Hangouts, and I'm going to do it in contrast to something that um, iPad users are probably familiar with, which is the uh, FaceTime. This is great, but only for iOS device to iOS device or to an Apple laptop, which I think is limited because you know if you want to talk to your students and hold a remote office hour, say you, you only do uh, distance learning, uh, then you know this is not a very effective way of doing it because not every student will be able to use this. But uh, doing Google Hangouts uh, is. Now I've got myself logged into my own personal uh, accounts um, on Google Plus, but you know, you guys would probably want to use the school's uh, version of Google+, Plus, which I think we have access to now, right, Vince? Yeah. Um, the only reason why is just because I don't want to desync my uh, tablet here. This is a Google Nexus. It's a $200 tablet, um, a fantastic one at that. So if anybody's interested in branching out from the iOS devices, I highly recommend it. It's cheap, and it's still cheaper than Apple's new uh, iPad mini, so by at least $100, uh, even at the most expensive version. So um, either which way, I'm signed into my personal account, and I'm at the menu off to the side here. Google Plus can be downloaded for anything, and you don't have to have Google Plus installed on your PC or laptop or whatever. You can just go to your Google's main home or homepage, and it's one of the first, it's actually the first um, uh, link at the very top of the page if you're on your Gmail site. And you'll get something that looks fairly similar to this, so allow you to get to Hangouts. But since we're talking about tablets, we'll just keep it with this. It has all of your information on the side that you would normally go to your home page, find people, profiles. But what we want is the Hangouts. And uh, the Hangouts will allow you to have video chat, people connect with you, and also just text chat, because not everybody, may, may, maybe they don't have a webcam or, or forward-facing cam. So they can still participate uh, through ch a text uh, chat channel. So I'm going to click on Hangouts. And I've already tested this out with a couple of people here, uh, Bob App and Marzia Karch. So I'm going to make sure that we can do this again. Uh, you would choose by typing in. And I don't know if I even had Marzia on there, but I found her pretty quick. Um, Bob, I did. And it, it's not limited to people that you know that are inside your Google Plus circles. You can just find them by searching their uh, Gmail uh, username. And uh, Real name, yeah, if they, if they actually have the real name in there. So maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are obviously, we, we definitely don't want to chat with any of those people. It would be, it would be weird. Um, so I'm going to click Start Hangout here. And if, uh, yeah, you'll hear the ringing. It's kind of like a phone call. And um, there's my lovely image of the top of the projector here. There's Bob looking tough. <laughs> and there's Marzia smiling. So the way I'm using my personal. You want me to send you an invite? Yeah. OK, so I'm already in this, but I can add more people by touching the screen. And then you got a little plus person icon up there, a little silhouette and plus. You can click on that. And I can, whoops, let me come around here. I probably can, yeah. And that is V Miller four. Let's see if it finds you. Hopefully. I would hope this is actually cross. And I don't know if it is. Okay, let's try that out. So you're saying you don't use Google Plus to do this? 
do. You do. Yeah, but it's available for both Android and iOS devices for your phone, iPad, um, Android phone, whatever. Okay, I'm going to quickly add, let me go back. Actually, Vince, can, uh, do you have a personal one I can use just for the demo sake? GVAC. Oh, there you go. Yep. Okay. So I hit OK. I should call you too. Um, Vince was saying that we would probably, for his stew mail, have to add him to a circle in order to get it to pop up there. But it wasn't finding it so easily. I'm assuming, though, for school purposes, it would probably be best to keep within uh, the school system with students. Um, I, I'm sure there's a load of uh, administrative rules of why you'd probably want to do that. Vince, are you getting in there or no? He should pop up as a fourth participant here. So this is the main interface, what you'd see um, on a tablet device. It's a little bit different on a PC, but it's roughly the same. Uh, what you're going to get is, is if you make sound, usually it'll swap to the other camera. And that's how it kind of works. Because uh, he just, I think he just came in, no? Are you in? Oh. So Bob's on there, Marzia makes some sound. Let's see if I'll move you. Not enough sound. I think you're frozen. Do you have your camera off? Ah, uh, okay. So if it does that, you actually won't, since the camera's off, it won't activate your camera. But as you're speaking, uh, and if everybody's being you know, courteous, so you could talk and have a conversation, and you'll see the faces change as you're talking. Um, some people don't like that, and you can. It'll, if you smile at the camera and freeze it or whatever, it'll leave your picture up, but you could probably still hear the voice. I have mine turned down, though. So you can have up to, I think it's still nine people inside these talks. Do you know if they've extended that? Yeah, I was hoping that they'd keep on adding more, but I think they're worried about, you know, they don't want people to be disappointed by bandwidth limitations. So at nine, it's good. But you can have lots of people also remoting in and watching this uh, hangout. So like if it's only a few people having a discussion, like let's say maybe team leaders for like a school project, um, other people can be added to it, but they won't have the ability to have the, the camera or the voice chat. They would be text only. So once you're in this, if you started the hangout, you can actually control what you see on people. So you can actually uh, pin the video which will freeze it, uh, mute the person. So if like they're being disruptive, you could always you know mute them out. And where did you guys go? And that's a possibility to happen. So if it's if you're on shoddy Wi-Fi, and I have only a couple bars, and I wonder if it was me, uh, that could possibly happen. Um, same thing happens with FaceTime all the time with us, uh, when my wife and I. It's quite annoying. But uh, what you would get is a similar choice to what I have here. So you could have the microphone mute, the picture mute, you can add more people, or that red phone up there will hang up the call if I click on it. So I could probably just do that, and then I can re-invite people. They're not going to be able to get back in so easily. Did you have a choice to, or was it a reconnect, Vince? Are you in the old one? I'm on the one with Bob. That's the only person I'm on. There's Bob, there's Marzia. So this is a nice tool that you could use. I would say that probably at its best use, it's going to be uh, great for people who want to do one-on-one -on -one office hours for the most part. Um, I think that it's, it's easier to try to, instead of wrangling, you know, nine students in all the time that, you know, and, and trying to diagnose, like, connection problems and everything else, just, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. You could also, at the same time, uh, you can, through Google Talk, which is what usually pops up on the side of your Gmail chat, which I can switch over real quick and show you. Um, 
you can just do a video chat with an individual. But Google Plus is kind of a neat way to have for you to build communities of, or your classes, for instance. You can create a set of circles. Has anybody done circles or used Google Plus at all? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I know you have. But um, it's just a, it's a very, just a, a very simple way of grouping people together. So I'm going to log into this. And uh, it'll allow you to, um, you know, like just you could set it up by, you know, section number or fall or spring or whatever, whatever works best for you. Um, but you can create groups, then you can then pull out of that. So where you can do kind of a similar thing inside of Gmail, but um, since Google Plus is designed for communities, and I would consider like your individual class as a community, I, I suspect um, that would be a lot easier that way. So let's switch. Hopefully there's nothing really weird in my stream here. I doubt there will be. I just know why it's trying to talk to me. Um, so, you know, you basically, it has like default like friends, family, and so forth, and work, and things like that. You can set up these, these circles that allow you to uh, group people together. Um, so we can go down to circles, see that, you can uh, go to actions, whoops, actually. Uh, this has changed in a while. Oh, right. So I could grab a couple people like Barry and Vince and say create circle. And I can change the name to like, you know, uh, whatever, class A. And you can keep on adding students to that. So I created a circle with two people for that. It could be like team one, team two, or whatever it is that you need to basically create groupings for uh, your chat or communication purposes. So sorry to run over that really fast, but it's just to point out that you can, you know, that way you can organize your students this way and then choose your individual students to communicate with uh, for one-on-one -on -one chat times. Similar thing can be done inside of Gmail. Uh, you can create like um, um, actions that'll actually group people up, but it's a lot easier to do it here. So um, does that, has anybody downloaded that onto their machine or onto their uh, tablet, the Google Plus? Or G plus, you did that. Do you have it on there? Okay. Um, if you have any, it's it's pretty simple to set up. Um, it's probably it has like three pages that you would walk through at first uh, that would ask you like f connect with people and so forth. You kind of blow past all of those and hit next, 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 and then do it manually afterwards. But it wants to try to get you to front load a community first. So point it at me. Um, well, that's, I mean, that's basically all I had for that, and the reason why I kept it with the communication tools in this is that it allows um, you to utilize the school's Google system uh, that we have set up in the Google Apps. I should probably point out, though, um, and I don't think this is an iOS available device, uh, Marzia might know, but you can get a lot of the same features here through Google Talk, and it's, um, I'll bring it up on the screen in just a second. It's very similar to what you would see now, I don't have a lot of room here. What's that? I know, yeah. But it, it is something that's available here off to the side. I have people online. Um, I can click on that. I can initiate a, a hangout directly from here. Um, I can you know, add as a, a voice or video chat. I can add people to that communication. Uh, but it's got a similar kind of feel on a tablet here where I've actually talked to people. I probably should not have that up. And uh, it shows who's online. Focus, maybe. And uh, well, display, you know, green means they're online. This little orange clock thing means they haven't done anything for a while. And the people that aren't online will be grayed out. 
I find this much more difficult to find somebody I want to talk to than using the circles system. I have a, a group of friends that we all uh, play games, so I, I put them all inside of a game group circle and I can go to them and, and talk with them pretty quickly. So uh, this would allow you to text chat or anything else. So if I actually wanted to talk to somebody like this, they bring up the text messaging system. And you can see at the top, I have a couple of other conversations that I've been talking to. So my wife and coworker, Barry Bailey. So, so yeah, that's, that's all I had to present, but I wanted to kind of open up to other people talking about w with their tablets uh, problems or um, possible solutions to things that they found along the way. I know most of you have been using them for a while. Um, does anybody have anything new that they want to talk about? I think it would be really good. And, and also all the online classes. Uh, Angel has a couple built-in virtual office hour tools inside of it, and um, sometimes it doesn't even load. It, it's not great. Um, and obviously, this isn't without its own flaws. Like, we had two people disconnect out of the, uh, the Hangout. But uh, this is a little bit easier to get back into. Um, and you know, it's pretty straightforward. If they see you, th keep this in mind, though. If they see you online, uh, they may try to initiate a conversation with you. Uh, but also, one nice thing is if you're not online and they start chatting with you, you will get those messages on your return. It's not like it's, it's lost in the void. So they can leave you messages that way. Um, uh, or you know, maybe you're supposed to be meeting up with them and they hop on a little bit early and say like, yeah, I, I can't make you know, this meeting. So they can leave you a note that way. And that's a good scenario too for the um, Gmail account. So if you've got <coughs> your personal Gmail account, Yeah. And then be online for that and they can look for that and then you, you kind of be in that mode. Right. Yeah, if you give out your personal one, yeah. they're always going to bug you probably. Yeah. So, um, which might be okay. I mean, some instructors want to be available all the time for that and some people do not. So, the other piece that I don't think you probably showed, Zach, which is fine, but the Google Hangout also has that possibility of streaming out on YouTube live. Yeah. Yeah, they can watch on YouTube, and obviously they can make comments inside the comment box if you have that open. I've never actually successfully done the uh, the stream. Uh, Marzia, you have, you've streamed before your Hangout. The, the Google Hangout here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it pretty easy to set up, or was it? Um, anybody interested in watching a little short video about it? I actually am, just to see what, you know, if it's short. It's like a minute, so. Um, I don't know if we have sound, though. Mm, this is more like a commercial, I think. Okay, maybe not what I was looking at. I thought maybe it was going to be a little bit of a tutorial, but, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously they're using this for like, you know, concert events and so forth, but, you know, being able to have like, you know, a, a seminar, like something similar to what we do with Adobe Connect, uh, you can pull that off with this. Uh, Adobe Connect will offer a whole lot more seats uh, on our server. I think we can do like 50 people, or is it 100? But, um, this is free, you know, like this is, everybody has access to this. We don't have license for everybody to use the Adobe Connect. And 
Uh, on mine, it doesn't because I don't have one. But on yours, I'm pretty sure it doesn't either. It's it wants to use it wants you to be able to look at what's going on there. Uh, it is a nicer the rear facing camera is much nicer on iPads. Oh well, you can actually no, you can use an actual camera connected like a higher end webcam and, and do that from a PC. But from the tablets, I think you're a little bit limited on what you can get in. Uh, but you can it's you know you can stream in audio off of a nice microphone and choose a, a you know on a PC you have a whole lot more options. You know you can have a professional mic, a nice video camera. But in this instance, you know if we're using it as tablets, you know I think it's it's a lot better. You know you could sit on the couch or whatever in the evening and hold your office hours and and communicate with students as they need to. Um, and I know that there's quite a few instructors here that drive quite a bit of distance actually to come to their classes, Some coming from like Warrensburg or wherever. So, but it's free, which is nice. What's that? No, uh, it would be nice if there was like a whiteboard. Now, there are on the desktop, and I've not seen it on the tablet, on the desktop only version, you can add apps into your Hangouts, and there's a lot of different apps. Um, I, I've used a couple. Uh, that one is actually a whiteboard, but it's designed for like uh, games and stuff. but. It'll allow you to draw on there and, and everything else. You can also, on the desktop version, share a Google Doc and have that be on the main screen. Um, I was thinking about some way I could like load in a dummy account onto this. And I know that the iPad users and, and Android users would be able to see it. They wouldn't be able to interact with it in the same way. So you could actually bring up you know, your whiteboard and draw, but not everybody else that was on a tablet would be able to engage in that. Um, maybe we can do, you know, another uh, session just kind of talking about that particular like crossover, but on a desktop. And so, it, you know, since it's so limited on a tablet, it may not it may not be uh, the best thing to talk about today. But yeah, I mean, you can bring that up. You can bring up PDFs. You can bring up. Um, uh, there are some much more complex apps that have like the ability to do like kind of game light like functions, light game functions, not any, anything complicated, but. Uh, allow you know the users to interact and uh, you know. You can put your title bar across the bottom. You go to these people where you don't know everybody. Yeah, and there's also some goofy, uh, fun, um, like little. Uh, actually, I think you can get to those on here. Um, you probably don't want to show your students these, um, but let me bring it up real quick. They have these like little things that you can add onto the screen, which is, I don't know if I can or not. To be honest, I really don't think I can. Yeah, they, uh, on the desktop version, they do have these like, uh, uh, like pirate hats and like weird glasses and stuff like that you can put on front of the screen. So I wouldn't alert your students to that. Otherwise, they'll be doing really annoying stuff really fast. Annotation, yeah, like it just allows to do like mark, simple markup or whatever that they need to do to help move them along, uh, prod them along. Yeah, actually, I mean, and, and for us, you know, sign language, it would be indispensable for communication with, uh, um, you know, you could have <laughs> be set up with, you know, um, American Sign Language only person, and then have the interpreter on the other end with your tablets, and then doing the interpretation there. So I know that um, when he and I are actually going to be meeting with um, two species later this afternoon, um, they want uh, the English department heads uh, us to come in to do their professional development days in January because they've got that five-day. 
Have we have we done any like uh, with? Um, I know that we were dealing with some Russian uh, schools and. Yeah, they're using either strategies that don't connect or who don't trust them enough to not to really link to try all of them. Yeah, and I, I think Skype is like the older option of this, and I think that it's okay. Um, I don't like anything that really revolves around the appearance that it may eventually make you pay. You know, and I think Google is going to be a little bit better on that, uh, where Skype. Um, I think for the time being, they still plan on keeping it uh, free to do direct Skype to Skype chatting, but I would trust, I wouldn't get invested into it. And because this is so built in, it's great. But um, keep in mind, though, like if you think that we have a local connection problem, if you're dealing with people across the world, ex prepare for the worst and then hope for the best. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what's everybody else's? So just in general about tablets, what's some discoveries or questions or problems that you guys are having? I know Donnie's smiling. Yeah, it's not, I, you know, it, it, it can't ever be a direct, at this point, a direct replacement for a good old desktop. But I think Windows 8 might be kind of the next thing. And maybe that stuff will get worked into um, these tablet. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, <coughs> but uh, and the ones that I've tried that aren't Microsoft's own uh, are nice. I mean, they work very well um, as a laptop replacement, most definitely. And since they have a built-in keyboard and everything else, but yet retain the touch screen functionality, it's. You can. Yeah. I wouldn't say it does less, though, because they have, uh, the one is an ARM. They have an ARM-based one that is not a full-blown PC. And then they have a, uh, an i7 version that is a full-blown PC. Uh, it's going to be odd. you know. And, like, and obviously, Apple's probably going to do the same thing, uh, provided that they don't get sued out of trying to do it, since uh, we've got Microsoft doing it first. Um, I, I've noticed that there's parts of OS X that have mimicked the app kind of selection. It looks like they're heading towards that. Um, the newest version, I guess it's Mountain Lion, is that right? Yeah, has like a, a button you can push that um, allows all the applications on the computer to be lined up like little apps like it would be on your um, iPad. But, you know, we're, we're at the very, very, very front of this technology. And it's changing extremely fast. I, I think they just released an iPad 6 yesterday, which is crazy. Like they kind of snuck. Oh, is that right? Oh, that, I'm sorry, not 6. Um, we're making jokes about an iPhone 6 coming out, but an iPad 4. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think that that's. It's just a small iPad, isn't it? It is. Is that the official price? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. It's definitely not cheap enough. I thought it was going to be, they really, I thought they were going to hit that $200, $250 price point. But they like, well, we're Apple. We don't have to do that, you know. And people will buy it, just like everything else. I, I think that most of the development lately, though, has been on the Android devices. It's unfortunate that they haven't caught on, pop culture-wise. But I have a coworker who just said that uh, somebody in the family bought a uh, iPhone five and had it home, and then immediately took it back and said, "Give me a, a Google, not Google, a, a Galaxy three or S 3 and uh, that's pretty impressive. I think that you know that th the iPad is not the end of uh, end of the road for what's best. I think that you guys can find lots of other devices. And like I said, those Microsoft Surfaces are they look really cool. I mean, 
I'm not a huge Microsoft person. I run PC at home right now. I used to be a Mac only person. Uh, but um, to be honest, I really don't care just as long as it gets the job done right. And it's also economically doable. Like, you know, buying a new $3,000 laptop every time I, I would, one died, got old really fast, you know. So and now you've got like a $250 Chromebook coming out, which is, you know, is keeps on pushing all this stuff forward. I mean, for a while, Apple was sitting at the top with the iPad. When it first came out, it was unbelievable. But you're going to see rapid changes from year to year. And then couple that with uh, with Moore's law, it just it's going to get smaller, faster, and better every time. These things. These things excel as entertainment devices. I think is really this is where they want to make the money. So like us shoehorning educational uses into them um, can be maybe frustrating at times. And and I know that uh, some of you have been completely disappointed with its value in the classroom. It, what your experience? Have you just not liked it at all, or is it like? More of a toy than. So I, I spend all the time doing everything related to the Windows environment in the class. And so on the iPad, nothing that I've done for the Windows environment won. So I'd have to go back and do um, you know, massive redo on terms of the movies back to uh, whatever it should be. MP4s or? Yeah. And then going again to the Well, I mean, that's an important thing that we'll have to, as things become uh, more and more wireless overall, like no keyboards, no wired internet, anything like that, they have to, we have to basically be in step with the technology as it comes out. Are they Well, as like a, as an in hand, you know, device to keep all of your notes and everything else on, I bet it's pretty great, you know. And it <laughs> it definitely is not us. Sure. I'm I'm logging into Angel real quick just so I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, that's a good app. 
I am hurrying. It's, it is frustrating. Logging in uh, can be a bit trying sometimes. Can you check? But, uh, mm. Okay. So tell me what you were having the problem with here. Let's get this going. So you're talking about how you weren't be able to you weren't able to see what's down below, right? If it goes too far down. And what's the current workaround? I know Chrome's a little different, so. Uh, that's no. I I have been using on my iPhone. I've been using the Chrome web browser, and I've noticed none of those problems are present in that. Um, but I will say that the Chrome web browser is slower on an iPad. I feel like it's been throttled in some odd way, and I wouldn't doubt it to be honest. You know, you can also close out, if I can do it. There. So you can also like collapse uh, by hitting a little plus symbol there. It is. You know, they're, the one thing that I've noticed with tablets is that they're really focused on the hope that people continue to do formatting, like CSS that would allow for, you know, if you, if you land on it as a mobile device, it'll change into a mobile presentation, where Angel doesn't have that. And we know that that's probably because it's at the end of life and that it's, their development on it are just not, you know, they're not taking it to that level. You, I bet in Blackboard, Whatever the newest version is, they have those features and those abilities. Oh yeah, Canvas looks amazing on it on a tablet. <coughs> sure, yeah, it is pretty uh, limited. You can get down if you go down to the bottom. There's this PDA. I didn't even know they were called PDAs anymore, but um, if you click on that and you say Okay, you get this view. So um, it's uh, pretty limited. It's not, let me scoot that down a little bit. That. It's not the best thing, but you can still get into and choose your courses. And uh, obviously I collapsed that one just a little while ago, so I can bring it back out. But it'll, it's a continuous scroll. Like you'll be able to, if you had a huge list, I had hidden most of mine, but uh, it would keep on going and allow you to keep on scrolling down and get to those lower classes if it went beyond the bottom of the, the page. Um, it's just very simple HTML. And then uh, you've noticed though that none of the nuggets are available. So it's, um, it's pretty, pretty limited. It's mostly just those buttons that are off to the side uh, and the most basic features. I can go into the course. So you can see I'm inside of a course here and you've got the about this section, syllabus. I mean, some of the nuggets show up here, but not in the way that they did in the actual, um, the regular angel view. But yeah, it's it's, you know, this is old technology. Angel's pretty old and hasn't been updated uh, seriously. So maybe we'll end up with something really cool like Canvas and, you know, have all kinds of new functions in there. And also, a lot of the newer LMSs connect directly into, like, Google Plus and things like that to add a very elaborate layer of connectivity between the LMS and your communication tools and everything else. So. 
So has, has, has there been like one, like what's the, your roadblock has been <laughs> just trying to teach chemistry with that oh, device? And what about the others? Like what classes are you using your tablets for? Or is it more of a personal device? Are you? I mean, I think that's, you know, it really is designed as a personal device. And like I said, they, they, it's an entertainment device. I mean, that's why they have iTunes. They're wanting to sell you apps. Uh, and they want to sell you uh, movies. But there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, like, just as a communication tool, it's pretty advanced. I mean, the fact that you could walk around and have a video chat with somebody in the middle of, you know, nowhere near a, a desk and a computer is, is pretty, uh, pretty amazing, actually. But... Um, yeah, I mean, educational-wise, it's, it's kind of awkward because obviously, like, if I was going to plug this in uh, and actually have it connected to the monitor, then all of a sudden it's not such a mobile device anymore. I'm actually tethered to this desktop. I think that IS has been looking at ways of, and AV have been looking at ways to get that into a classroom connected directly to pro projector wirelessly, but I think that's something that uh, they've hit some dead ends on. Well, you can definitely record um, there. No, definitely not there. But you can record what you're doing on the iPad or Android tablet. Yeah, you might as well just be using the PC at that point instead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think of these as kind of an extension device. Like, you know, I, I still am a desktop user, but, you know, uh, it's becoming more and more so that I can, you know, I, I typically just carry this around the house. You know, like, if, I, if I'm playing a game or if I'm, uh, like, doing heavy typing, I'm obviously not going to do it on this. But, um, but it, it's worlds different than, I mean, I, I, I hate to sit here and trump, or trump up a... Uh, Android devices, but I've had a lot better luck doing normal things on, instead of using, I have a, my wife has an iPad, so I've used that too. But there's a lot of usability things in these now that Apple is baby stepping out. So if there's things that you can't do with the iPad, I'm not talking about like individual apps, but I'm talking about like just functionality and the way that it, it, it works as a device. Take a look at it. I mean, they look at features of them and they may have something that you could use. Yes, yeah. Google owns Android, but it's, it's an open source operating system. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that people, uh, that maybe repel people away from, you know, iOS is very standardized. You can go to an iPhone, an iPad, uh, uh, an iPod, you know, touch, and they all are almost identical, especially now. Like, if you were going to buy one of the new, each one of the new devices, it would be the same. For Android, you have a little bit of, you know, like, obviously, like, a Samsung will have what's called the TouchWiz interface on top of it, which looks very different than the raw Android 4.1 that's on this. Uh, it, it, it makes it hard for people to standard. Like we couldn't say like at JCCC that this is our device that we use. This is the supported device because there's so many Android flavors. Yeah, I, I, I think they're definitely more, they have more complicated. Yeah. The cool thing is I think that uh, at some point there's going to be departments here on campus that'll have possibly both devices uh, available for checkout. Maybe, I, 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 that's what I thought might be happening. Um, 
and you know you could always go try out another device just to see how how it works. I think really, I mean, there's since there's so many choices, it's uh, it's all about finding the, the particular flavor that works best for your classroom workflow. Yeah. yeah, I would recommend that actually there are full-size Bluetooth keyboards that can be used with oh, that. Well, I know. I, Well, and at that point, though, you, you know, you start considering the weight of the device with the keyboard. It's like attached to the case, and you're like, well, this is almost a laptop. So, yeah, it's it's a strange period. I mean, it, but it's going to it's it going to change. Yeah. Really have to be the but that, I mean, like I I felt Bob's before. It's like I think Ultrabooks actually weigh less than than that right now. So. Does anybody else use any kind of third party to, besides the keyboards? It seems like everybody's got keyboards connected, but any other devices that you found that work great with, uh, with the iPad that you can use in classrooms? I actually don't know anything about it besides like the Bluetooth um, headsets. I haven't really seen anything. But I know that there's uh, a Bluetooth camera that uh, works as like a microscope uh, that's pretty great that people have used for. Um, I don't know how many times magnification, but that would be great for biology to be able to pass around uh, an iPad and, and show um, what they're looking at. That, that's pretty pretty amazing. But right, anybody else else? You, you saw in Apple's demo when, when they came to the world that the, the Apple Watch um, and Apple TV were sort of displaying that their iPad on the screen and they weren't tethered to each other. They were also able to show other iPads. Well, it is. They they actually took the Apple TV and they ad hoc networked. I think to their uh, laptop, they had a MacBook Pro up there, and then they had the Apple TV, and they were create. They created a network together, and then allowed the other devices to connect in, um, because we have enterprise level. Um, wireless here with what many layers of security. These home devices don't always work so great with that. But if you have Apple Homes, and I know even with Apple Maps, they go for each street, they still have to be able to move into a street or go to walk around the house, but nobody is going to have them put in any of the directions. Because sure. No, and I think, and that's one thing that they, with the Apple experience, they've tried to make sure it's very friendly to everybody, and and that could also pose roadblocks for somebody that wants to take it to a maybe more advanced level. Um, so. Yeah, that's you know just keeping. I think yeah. I mean they could do. Similar thing here. Yeah. Anybody have anything else to share? No? Okay, well, we're almost out of time. Uh,